All right, so it's time to get custom on these fuel rails. What I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this guy right at the very edge, where right before that bend there. And then I'm going to flare the end of that so that it'll hold a hose well. And same with this guy down here. I'm going to go ahead. I like that it comes around the back there because um, I can tuck it all really well. But I'm going to cut that right at the bend. And then I've got to flare it. It's going to be pretty cool. Now, pro tip on cutting fuel pipe, tube, whatever you want to call it, um, fuel tubing. You don't want to use a saw. If you use a saw, you end up with tons of that, which is powdered metal. You end up with tons of that inside your cut, inside your, your tube. And where does that end up? It comes out into your injectors, clogs up your injectors, and suddenly your 1650s or 800s, uh, at least on one cylinder. The other ones won't be. Um, that can cause pretty major issues. So what we're going to do is we want to use a tube cutter. The problem with tube cutters is they're kind of bulky. So this guy is a little bit too big. This is a pretty nifty when it ratchets, so you can get a little bit better, you know, a little bit better angle on, on the things. But that's not going to fit against the amount of space we have. So what I'm going to try to do is try to straighten this tube first and then cut it. Now it's probably going to look like crap where I straighten it, but we don't really care how that part is because that's going to get cut off. But I just need it straight enough to be able to cut right where it's not like crap. Um, that's going to be a little bit tricky, but I'm going to see if I can get it to go. If not, luckily these are not difficult to come by. Um, lots of people pull them off. so give it a shot and there it is cut off right where we wanted it it doesn't leave really there's a tiny bit of a burr and I'll just use a little deburring tool to get that out of there without putting a bunch of metal in it but it didn't leave any metal inside the tube and that's what's important so the next thing we're gonna do to that is we're gonna flare it and I'm gonna go get my fancy flare tool which is cheating but I like good tools so I'll show you guys that all right, this is my flare tool. Um, pardon my mess in my box. Just trying to do what I can with what I got. So what we're going to do is we're going to basically attach this, as long as there's room for this die to fit with it uh, basically flush to the end, we can flare it. So that's all you need as far as room goes. Um, that'll work great. So, I'm going to go ahead and put this thing together. Alright, so we have our die inserted. Now we need our mandrel, I guess. I'm not really sure what it's called. Um, this can also make these kind of quick connect formings. In fact, huh, let me, let me think about something real quick. I wonder if, gosh, I wonder if I could, if I had enough room to do EFI connections. Um, so that's this guy right here. This will make an EFI connection, but you need a lot more. No, I don't think I'm going to have enough space because it's got to go all the way to the end and it's got to be straight. Um, if I had a little bit more of an end on it, I would definitely run that instead. That's going to make a much better connection and it's, it's a quick connect as opposed to using clamps. You just use the, the clip-in EFI style connectors. Uh, which are super cool. Oh man, now I'm, now I'm thinking of other ideas. See, that's the problem when I start working, I start getting all kinds of ideas, things that I could do if I was to just, you know, spend a little bit more time on it. If I quick connects on factory fuel rails would be pretty badass. Alright, this is a little harder to work with one-handed. 
like many things, but we should be able to make it work. All right, so it's tight. It's tight on the tool here. So I can get it into the camera. Now, <laughs> I'm dropping things, trying to make, trying to make for good, for good TV. I don't know what that was. I just heard something crash outside. So we're going to basically screw that forward, um, and then we start using the hydraulic pump. You just want to make sure it gets in there. Now for these bubble, it's basically a bubble flare. Um, I only like to do about two, maybe three pumps. So now I'm going to look at it and see, because all I'm trying to get from it is very similar to the factory end, which looked like this, you know, which just gives you a little, little spot for the, for the hose clamp to, to clamp onto. So I'm going to open the valve, comes back, just get back enough to pull the die out there, loosen it up. And look at that. So that was actually even, even a little bit bigger than I had wanted. Um, hopefully I can still get a hose over it. So we'll definitely just do two pushes on the next one instead of three. But that'll keep keep the hose on once you put a clamp on it. Um, yeah. Now I'm going to go ahead and get to work on this side. And again, I wanted it here. Don't know if that's going to work. Maybe I could do it here instead. That gives me a good run. And that would put it, if we look at where we're going to end up, that would put it into the inside of the manifold. So at least it would, the fuel line would basically run over the top of the inlet. And so I like that. I like that. That's clean. I was going to run it around the back, you know, alongside this one, but I don't think that's going to be enough. So we'll cut it here instead and then flare it and have a beautiful second line. And I don't even have to straighten that to cut it because I can cut it like here. And that should be enough room. I love it. So show off this fancy tool here. See? Oh, yeah. Tighten it down a little bit more. When you're in a tight space, this is fantastic. If you're doing brake lines on a car and you're up inside the fender, you're not going to find a tool that works. Sometimes they make these that are really small, and when you're trying to cut big lines or thick lines or stainless lines, it just doesn't work so well. But this, there it goes. So now we're cut. Nice clean cut. Loosen that up a little bit. Pops right off. We have our clean, clean end. And we'll go ahead and, and bubble a quick flare into that. And once we put a quick flare, it should be perfect. Get it snug. All right, we're snug. We're just gonna do one. We'll just do two pumps this time. See if we like that better for the future ones. Oh yeah, that's a much better end. So two pumps is all that they need. Um, you can see there's not a lot of marring. A lot of times when you're doing the flaring, it really mars up the the pipe itself or the tube itself. I, I need to figure out if these are called pipe or tube. I think it's tube. Um, yeah, it's definitely tube. I just keep saying pipe. Uh, this one, definitely too big. I could cut it off and do it again. Yeah, I'm kind of, I'm going to cut it off and do it again. That's just a little bit too big. So, um, yeah, but it's going to look pretty dang good when it's done. All right, I redid that side. Looks a little bit better. This side looks pretty solid as well. Um, Looking perfect. I'm going to go ahead and put this back on the car, or the motor, and that fuel rail is done. It's a 500 horsepower fuel rail. Don't let anybody tell you different. Um, I mean, if you want pretty fuel rails, absolutely. Uh, if you want rails with nice pulse dampers like Radium makes, those are awesome rails. But is it a requirement? Definitely not. Um, is it going to save your motor from damage? 
as long as you run them in parallel, you don't have to worry about fuel starvation on one cylinder. So do it. Ooh, time for that new injector smell. Here we go, the unboxing. Oh. Look at that, even comes with connectors. Nice. These aren't my favorite connector, to be completely honest. I really prefer the US car connectors like they, the ID injectors use, um, injector dynamics. Uh, but for the price, um, you can't beat these. They flow really well, they're well balanced, and they're, you know, 60, well not 60% less, they're about 60% of the total cost of the ID-17s. Um, I would prefer to tune on ID-1700s, but um, if you want better drivability, the IDs definitely have better um, low pulse width data. It is, it's spectacular, but these are plenty drivable. We run these in hundreds of customers, street cars. Boom, see if it'll focus, see if it'll focus. Come on, look at that, 1650. Mm, yep, uh, single hole in the bottom. It's gonna get the fuel in. Um, that does create a few issues at, at low throttle and part throttle, but it, uh, like I said, they're, they're, they're definitely, they definitely work on pump gas. Um, they work really well on ethanol, and they work extremely well on methanol. Um, they come with a nice, if I can get it out of the box, it's always a hard part. They do come with some injector data, um, a pretty basic flow card, uh, your offset values. This information is available on their website too. Um, the really thing you want to look at is the how they flow match. The only downside to that is this flow match is at basically wide open spray. So if you're at, at a smaller pulse widths, you're hoping that those numbers are similar as well. Um, but that's where we find the variance is at the lower pulse widths. Sometimes you'll have a cylinder that definitely flows more or less than the others. Um, so yeah, 0.9%, that's pretty good. Offset match with 0.5, also pretty good. So I'm um, looking at the actual flow data. Yeah, there's definitely a lower flow on that guy, 1569, and a much higher flow on this one, 1583. So we'll actually use these numbers to kind of put our injectors in certain spots. Um, cylinder four tends to need the most fuel. Um, a lot of times I have to trim in a little bit more fuel. So we'll probably put that big guy in cylinder four um, I don't usually do individual cylinder trimming or individual injector setup with FIC injectors because they don't give me enough data off of each individual injector. Um, if I sent them back in and had them do individual injector tests and showed all of the data for each specific injector, um, could do that and then do individual injector tuning in the, in the I guess, that, normally I do that in Haltech, but um, if I run, I'm looking at possibly running a fuel tech on this car instead of the Haltech. I haven't quite decided yet, but uh, you can set them up individually. Is it necessary at this kind of power level? I don't know, um, but it is the technical proper way of doing it. Um, anyway, it's just good information. Ooh, it comes with a nice sticker too. That is a decent looking sticker. The only downside is it only comes with one. Um, so. If I wanted one on each of the back windows, I'd have to buy another set, which it's a four cylinder, so, um, so yeah. All right, let me figure out which of these injectors is which so I can match them a little bit better. Uh, the other thing you wanna remember on a Subaru is your firing order. If you put the big one next to the little one in firing order, so if you put that in number four, don't put that one in number one. Do that one in like number three, because the, the engine fires one, three, two, four, which on the engine itself is boom, 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 boom. So then it goes boom, boom. So you don't want to have a huge jump in fueling, at least in my opinion, um, if you can avoid it. So I want to kind of have an average fuel on that bank and an average fuel on this bank. So I'll probably put the big one there, um, the smaller of the medium ones there, the small one here, and then the larger of the medium ones here. And that's kind of the, the route that I plan on doing here.
Now would you look at that, we basically have one set of injectors installed. I'll move those to the middle. I'm probably going to run them like that, clocked about like so, so that I can just put the wires together and run them down real nice and tight. Because I'm wiring this whole motor. Um, rewiring it from basically from scratch using the factory pigtails and then just uh, I'll actually probably use factory wiring for these until I come into splice with the, the harness for whatever EMS I, I go with. So there's a couple of fuel ejector clinic injectors um, on the one side and a rail that's going to support, like I said, 500 horsepower on ethanol, E98, I don't even care. I'll probably do it on methanol too. Uh, maybe not. Pretty close though. Um, so in the future, I will more than likely be upgrading that. But for now, we're on a budget trying to get it done. So that's what it's going to be. And it's going to be pretty nice and tight and clean. I mean, this is just going to be a hose that goes under the manifold. This one already comes under the manifold. Um, they're going to both go to their own location with the fuel pressure regulator and then a Y for the feed. And it's going to be, be awesome. So on to the other side. Now this side brings in kind of a unique challenge. A couple of things here. Um, I hate this vacuum port here. But it is on the correct side of the motor to run it to the fuel pressure regulator. The reason why I don't like it is it's a single cylinder vacuum source. Which means at lower RPM specifically somewhere around 3000 um, if you don't have a lot of load on the engine and you have a fairly aggressive cam profile which these two liter cams are uh, you can end up with some very very strange waveform action on the pressure regulator which creates very inconsistent fuel pressure and it's it's basically a harmonic um, I just put this here when I had the motor tipped over because oil was coming out that um, it's basically a harmonic, so it causes weird oscillation and pulsing. Uh, they call it on the GRs, the GR stumble, but it does exist on all of the years, um, but they were just more sensitive as they went to top feed injectors. Um, so here's these rails. This has, this is normally where the fuel pressure regulator sits. Uh, TurboSmart, uh, some other companies as well, makes an adapter that just bolts right in there, has a little O-ring piece. Uh, I'm going to run that, so that fixes that issue. The next issue is, this is our cam sensor for the variable cam timing, and there's no way that a connector is going to fit. But I don't need this pipe, so I'm going to take this rail back off. We're going to cut that pipe, which is fitted down here. Um, we're just going to basically cut that little metal piece, and then cut this little metal piece. And then this one already has a nice, um, I guess this one here, it's already a nice flare. So we don't have to do any flaring on this particular piece. We're just going to snip and snip and take that pipe out and get that adapter, put our injectors in, and then we'll be ready for the next step in the fuel system. Looking a little closer at this, I don't really like these kinks. Um, I think I'm going to cut it here and flare it so it'll sit on the motor like so. Basically just right after it comes out will be my hose connection. Um, I would actually prefer it, gosh, even clear up here. Um, maybe I can, and yeah, that'd be way, hose connection, slide it under. Um, less kind of bendy pieces, the better. Um, seriously considering it. Or, what if, What if we could use the same fuel rail that was on the other side, on this side? Would it work? So... So I'm looking at this rail. This is the same rail that's on the other side. Um, I almost like that better. And that little turbo smart fitting, as much as I want to run it because it's clean and nice, it is... It does cost money. It's not free. Um, this is free. Man, that almost looks like it was just meant to be. It's like it's a mirror of the other side. Um, I don't... This bent a little tight. Man, that's... If I just did the same thing, cut this here, 
flared that one. And run that underneath. Yeah, that's what I'm going to do. Um, definitely, that's way cleaner. Uh, shouldn't be an issue with alternator clearance here. Yeah, and this will be the return for sure. I'll run the return on this side. Uh, I don't really like how tight that kink is, but I don't currently have another one of these rails. I'm sure I could find one, but I like it. I do, so I'm going to do it that way. Much better. All right, got this one built, and of course, it is the prettiest flare I've done yet. Um, which just kind of goes to the more times you do something, especially in a row, the better you get at it. So now, I'm just going to go ahead, bolt this guy down, because why not? Then I can say I finished the install of something on this car today. Um, not going to have time to really do much more. So you... Uh, basic garage stuff. You don't ever tighten anything until every part of it is in. That way you know that you're not cross-threading anything. Um, so now it's all where I want it. Snug it down. This doesn't put out enough torque to need to like worry about um, over-torquing. There you go. That is one complete fuel rail setup. Um, as far as the, uh, it's a little bit tweaked. This pipe definitely got bent at some point. Um, felt like it's contacting down there. I'm gonna try to bend that a little bit, hopefully without damaging it. If I damage it, like I said, they're cheap. Um, they're not hard to come by. Let's see if we can't. Actually, I'm going to go ahead and loosen that back up. So loosen that guy and see if we can just come up with it a little bit. Yeah, like that. Beautiful. All right. Now, if I decide later that I don't want the ski ramp here, you know, if I don't like how that comes up, I might cut this flat and then flare it. Um, I don't, like I said, really like that there, but um, I think it'll be okay on the return. Here we go. Did something. Every little bit adds up. Eventually, it'll be in the car. Um, I saw a buddy of mine's getting his 07 STI back together, and I think that'd be a cool race. He's ran, I think, high nines with his. Um, no one ever runs what they're supposed to the first time out. And I like taking the little, the little wonder, wonder coupe that could and racing much faster cars with it. I usually lose, but it's fun to at least give them, make, make someone nervous because if they lost to me, you know, it'd be, it'd be rough. Although this time, I'm not going to say it's going to be slow like before. It's probably going to be pretty fast. Um, yeah, it's coming together. Japanese version seven, getting a little bit of, a little bit of treatment. Once I, uh, I don't, I mean, it's all dirty in there. It's hard to clean a motor with it together, or I guess even harder to clean when it's taken apart. Once everything's all sealed up, once I've got, it's part of why I put these injectors in. Um, that way, nothing ends up in the bore, or ends up down on the intake valves. Uh, once I get it all kind of sealed up. I can hit it with some simple green, do the old uh, heat gun. You basically heat gun the motor, the block, to get it kind of warm, throw some simple green on it, and then just uh, uh, blast it off with, with air, essentially. And it uh, usually takes all the grime and dirt with it. Um, that's a good trick. And I'll do that once, once I get some more stuff together. And then also, like I'd said, I want to paint the intake manifold. Is this just scratched up from being sitting around and, and from shipping? Um, plus, I probably do it orange like the last one. I've got this cool, uh, cool alternator relocate bracket um, from Keem over in Russia. 
So this basically just helps relocate the alternator and makes it work better with a rotated manifold setup. Um, not running power steering as of this moment. I might do electric power steering if I decide that I want power steering, but I definitely don't want power steering coming off the engine. Um, if anything is going to be right here, it's going to be a mechanical fuel pump in the future for methanol. One of my ideas, thinking about, you know, when I eventually do decide to put fuel rails on it, um, was running the, uh, not the radium dual injector setup. I really like the radium setup because it uses a single rail, but I also don't like it because it uses a single rail. The reason I don't like a single rail is I was, I was thinking it'd be really cool to run a dual fuel setup. Um, dual fuel basically means you have two separate fuel systems in the car. One is pump gas or flex fuel even, and the other one is straight racing methanol. Um, what that does is it lets you have, you know, on pump gas, decent mileage if, if you were to decide to run it on the freeway, um, make the car street legal and actually be able to drive it. And then without even, you don't even have to necessarily have the flip of a switch, but you could do it at the flip of a switch, um, turn on, activate the high power mode, which would then arm the second fuel rail, which would have very large injectors. Um, I might even do smaller injectors in the primary and very large, maybe the new 2500 cc injectors. Um, eh. Well, wouldn't be necessary with this turbo, but down the road, you know, who knows, who knows what will happen on this car. Um, even if I did the 1650s on the secondaries, I could do stock 560s in the primary, run that on pump gas, and then as soon as I get into boost, it would, it would start up the secondary system with methanol. Um, if I had a mechanical fuel pump, wouldn't have to worry about fuel pumps, um, run the methanol in a separate fuel cell in the trunk so I could use the factory tank for the pump gas, and then put the methanol in its own methanol safe because methanol is pretty corrosive. It's not it's not nice on rubber. Um, it's not nice on aluminum. It's really not nice to anything. Um, but there are certain certain fuel cells and fuel components that are designed for it. Um, if you if you anodize aluminum, it holds up to it really well. But raw aluminum doesn't like it. Uh, things like that. So that's kind of a future possible idea. I like that idea. I don't know of anybody that's done it on a Subaru, but IAG has their dual injector TGVs, which allow for two fuel rails, which would allow me to run dual fuel system. So I'm kind of leaning that way. But again, these are future things. Probably not even this next year. That'd probably be two years, maybe three years down the road. Um, motor would definitely have to be built at that point. This is, you know, version 7 engine is a pretty strong engine from Japan. It is a 2 liter, but it has a variable intake cam, which allows for it to make torque, kind of like a 2.5 liter. And then on top of that, it also has um, stronger internal components from the factory. The pistons are forged, at least to my knowledge. Um, they're not cast. You can even see when I was looking at the pistons underneath, underneath the motor, um, the bottoms don't look like the waffle pattern. They look, you know, smooth. Um, so they, they don't typically have the same kind of ringland problems that the U.S. motors have. Um, they don't have the rod bolt problems that the U.S. motors have. So uh, they just kind of, they're a little bit better put together. So that's possible future things. But for now, I'm just going to get a um, new oil pan on it. I have an oil pan for it, which is good. Um, Gonna put equal length headers. I know a lot of people don't like equal length headers because they don't sound like a Subaru, but in all my testing on the dyno, they make more power. Um, and that's really what it comes down to. Um, then let's see what else. Uh, coil packs, just gonna run stock STI coil packs this time. Not gonna do my fancy AEM setup. Um, no reason to. Factory STI coil packs, we ran at 1100 horsepower on the drag cars and they work so that should be fine um, these tgv housings these are japanese tgv housings if you look they're not deleted but they're deleted they were never finished so they never the in japan they never finished milled the uh the the inside of that and then put the butterflies in so they just don't have the butterflies in them uh, which is pretty cool basically get a free part because it's japanese and again 
you know, they, they, they cast it the same as the U.S. TGV housing, but they just don't. They just didn't finish it. Um, I'm going to finish today. It's about time for me to go, but I'm going to go ahead and swap those just so I don't forget. And then I'm going to be done. So it's a good video for today. It's a good stopping point. Um, I'll have some more parts for the car for the next video. Hopefully I'll have um, the timing belt stuff. And then uh, oil system wise, I'm going to do the Killer B pickup with the stock STI pan. And then I'll have the headers and I'll be able to bolt the headers on, get a new timing belt on her. And at that point, um, unless I decide to do the head studs, which I'm still kind of tossing around the idea of, um, if I decide to do the head studs, I'll do that. But if not, then I'll just uh, put it back together and it'll be ready to drop in the car. Um, which is cool. It's a cool, cool thing. Uh, I'd start wiring it, except I don't, I don't know. I haven't quite decided. I think if I started wiring it, I'd wire it to like a bulkhead plug or just a, you know, just a main plug kind of off here, maybe with a foot out and do, do a main plug. That would work. That way the engine harness could come off easy. I have built um, a map uh, in fuel tech, so I know what all my sensor inputs and outputs are uh, already. And then if I decided to run Haltech, I have those maps as well already pinned out and everything. Um, so yeah, that's what we got. See you all in the next video. Thanks for watching. Hit that like and subscribe. Um, you know I need it. If I get a hundred subscriptions. I can uh, get my own cool, unique web address, which would be rad. Um, 